Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my May Mission Inspiration. This is uh, a Facebook group by Mike Deacon Art channel. He has a Facebook group and there's a monthly challenge, has eight steps, has some suggested colors and suggested words. And if you want to join, just go over to Facebook, look for Mission Inspiration and it's a group that you can ask to join and you can join in with these challenges. So the the guest artist this month is Ann Williamson, who also has a channel here on YouTube, and she picked these prompts. So thanks, Ann. The first one was to use bits of graph paper or composition paper. Um, I was looking around. I thought I had a pad of graph paper, but I couldn't find it. Um, that is something that would be really fun for collage, and I never really think about it, but... Uh, now I will think about it. Thanks, Dan. So I had uh, these post-it notes on my computer desk that had a graph on them, and I decided to just tear up a few of those and use it for this first layer of collage. So I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and a plastic palette knife to apply these uh, quickly and easily, kind of in little clusters or clumps, just to start the background, break the page, do something. <laughs> um, in the final, final piece, you can still see them, but they're not blatantly obvious. They're not like in your face, but you can still see them when you look at it. And at the end of the video, there'll be close-up pictures and you can take a look at that. The next step was to use jelly paper or stamped book pages. Um, I had this thing laying on the floor right next to my desk. It is a cleanup pull of a round jelly plate. Um, it had a lot of different paints on it because I was using kind of it as a palette um, to do some, I think I was stamping. I was using it as like a stamp pad with acrylic paint, maybe. Oh, I know, with vegetables, that's right. When I made that ATC with ve stamping with vegetables. And um, I wanted to clean that dried paint off. And so I had just put a coat of a metallic silver on there and then pulled the whole thing off and I thought oh this looks like a moon so I decided to cut that out and add it to the page and then at the bottom um, I knew that I needed a ground you know I've said this a million times and I'll say it again I can't stand it when there's not a ground in a composition where things are just floating like you know in the middle of a page it drives me crazy so I decided to add <clears throat> some ocean waves at the bottom of the page and this is where I made my mistake that I later figured out. I should have made this a, a horizontal page instead of a vertical page because it would have helped me a lot but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. So I got out a few book pages from an old paperback and I stamped on them with teal which is one of the colors for this month and I think that that ink is called patina, I think, but it's a teal color, light teal color. And put those on the bottom to look like ocean waves. I had made a plan, um, an idea. I had an idea for what the page was going to have on it. I didn't, like, have a full idea what the layout would be like. I was still, still playing and being, you know, spontaneous, but I did have an idea of what my images were going to be because I had to think about it. <laughs> and I'll tell you why in a second. <laughs> um, sometimes I just completely wing these things and other times I make kind of a little plan and sometimes I have a very detailed plan, but in this case it's just kind of a little plan, but not thought out so well that I realized that I should have made this um, uh, landscape instead of portrait or horizontal instead of vertical whichever way you want to think about it so after those were put on um, down at the bottom I went ahead and gave those a quick dry and then the next step was to use one of the suggested paint colors I'd already used a teal um, but I needed to add another color so I got out some spray some gray spray and I now know that these new sprays are going to be a little bit of a, of a problem. Um, I'm going to have to 
I don't know, I'm going to come up with a solution for it. But these are acrylic sprays from Marabou and I just got them and I've only sprayed with this once and already the nozzle is messed up. So I'm going to have to take it off and soak it. Um, I used my pen uh, to clean it out enough that it would spray, but it was spraying all over my desk. I mean, like all over everything it has now gray splatters on it. Um, it was frustrating me, so I see that these are going to have nozzle problems, just like all the other sprays. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take the the tops off of them when I'm not when they're not in use. Somehow, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly, but I'll come up with a solution because I'm very excited that there are sprays that are permanent. Uh, they don't smear when you go over them; they're acrylic, but they're going to cause nozzle problems. So the next step was to use bits of twine, ribbon, lace, or yarn. And so I got out some of this jute twine, um, inexpensive stuff, and I'm just making a border all the way around the page because I wasn't sure what else to do with it, really. <laughs> I thought it would make a nice, interesting border, and because I have waves at the bottom and... Um, I don't know, twine seems like something that would go with the nautical theme. Uh, you know, it kind of looks like rope, like you would have on a ship or something like that. So I just was thinking about kind of those old timey looking posters that would have that wavy sort of a border with an anchor at the bottom or something. Um, I have an image of in my head of something that I probably have seen but I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. Maybe it has an octopus, maybe it has an anchor, you know, something like that, old timey looking. So I just glued that down with Aliens Tacky Glue, um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> Next step was to use at least three focal images. Before I did that, I realized that I wanted to seal the page. Um, I hadn't put a gesso coat on this, and this is 140 pound watercolor paper. So I, f I knew that I was going to be using um, water soluble media over the top of this, and I really wanted to get a coat of sealing on there. Also, the top there where the gray splatters were was bothering me. I wanted to tone that down a bit. So I went ahead and used very watered down gesso over the whole thing, including the rope, which um, made it look a little bit different than it had before because I went over the top of it. Um, but yeah, gesso first. So three focal images. What things come in threes? Okay, you've got, well, you've got three blind, blind mice. Um, the, ed, the ego, the super ego, that comes in threes. Uh, the three flit fates, you know, the blind fates, there's three of them. Uh, three, three billy goats gruff. Uh, the dog that guards the gates of hell, Severus, is a three-headed dog. Um, I don't know. There's They say disasters come in threes. I mean, I was trying to just rack my brain what kind of things come in sets of three. So I decided on three ships, like the Pinta, the... Um, Santa Maria, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, and the Nina. <laughs> it took me a second. And the reason that I thought of that is because the other day we were having this big discussion. There's this, uh, there's this new show on, and it's this guy, and he's a, tre a sh treasure hunter. He goes and hunts for treasure ships. And the astronaut, Gordon, had made this map, apparently, of what he thought were shipwrecks when he went around he orbited the world in a capsule he had these anomalies that he saw in the oceans and he wrote them all down and made this treasure map and so we were talking about that because we've been watching the show it's called Gordon's Treasures I think and um, or no Cooper's Treasures Gordon Cooper so we were talking about that and then another person that was in this discussion was talking about how his favorite books were these books that he'd written in, um, read in, not written, <laughs> read in sixth grade that were about the Spanish Armada. And we were talking, in, and on the most recent episode of the show, um, 
this guy, I can't remember his name, I think his last name is Nicholas, but anyway, it's on the Cooper's Treasures. He had went to Spain and was considering one of these spots on the map to be potentially one of the uh, ships, not the Nina Pinta or Santa Maria, but one of the other ships that had come after that, that went to the Americas from Spain. And he's going to, I think he's going to dive on it and try to find it. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, all that stuff got kind of wrapped in my brain. And <laughs> so I settled on these kind of old fashioned ships. And as you can see, they're supposed to be three, right? Because it's three ships. But because I hadn't made the page in the right direction, I didn't have any place to put the other ship. And I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You can see me tapping my hand. And you realize this is sped up four times fast. So I spent a lot of time fussing and tapping my hand and trying to figure out what I was going to do. Where could I put the other ship? And I finally decided that my third focal image was going to be the moon <laughs> because there's no place to put the other ship. It just, it just wasn't. I mean, if I put it, tried to put it in front of this other one, it would look like a rowboat. So it just, yeah. <laughs> this is where my kind of half plan didn't really come together. But I decided to just go ahead and uh, make the moon stand out more so that it can be my visual triangle of big ship, small ship, moon. That's three focal images. So I did skirt around it, but it took me a minute to like try to figure out what the heck I was doing. <laughs> so I also didn't know if I could draw ships or not, but I think you can tell what it is. I think it's supposed to look like one of those old timey multiple sail, square sail ships that I think that they would have um, in the Spanish Armada that maybe have lots of gold and maybe they've sunk. I don't know, but you know, I saw three ships go sailing by. On Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, I saw three ships go sailing by on Christmas Day in the morning. You know, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, that was a lot of rambling and chattering to try to explain how I got to where I got to. Um, it's kind of funny, a little glimpse into my craziness. So I drew the images with the Stabilo All pencil, which is a water-soluble pencil in very nice black and then I activated it using a water barrel brush um, to kind of smush and smear and make a little look a little bit watercolory if you know what I mean okay so that explains my concept next step was to make marks with household items. So I got some bubble wrap and uh, the rest of the white gesso that was on my palette and made clouds, kind of a stormy um, sky, you know. Can you imagine hundreds of years ago, they like got on the ocean and sailed and sailed and sailed and sailed far enough to find new places. I mean, that's pretty daring and probably pretty dangerous. And I bet a lot of people lost their lives doing that. So the next step was to add a word or words for the month. The words were flower, accomplish, climb, or reach, hike, or succeed. I picked accomplish and I picked a um, quote and printed it off and then now I'm cutting it out, kind of using a wavy, you know, still sticking with that same whole wavy uh, shapes. I didn't want to make them super straight. I want them to fit in with like my waves and my clouds and all that type of stuff. So I just cut them that way. Sticking them down with the same uh, matte gel medium and a plastic palette knife. I found the quote on the internet. I just searched quotes about accomplish <laughs> or something like that and just came up with different quotes from I think brainyquote.com and then uh, once those are on I go ahead and give them a little bit of an accent 
with the Stabilo All Pencil and activate with that with the water brush. Make them stand out from the background a little bit. And it's appropriate quote from, you know, for this whole theme of the ships and the sailing and taking your dreams and believing in them and yeah, that type of stuff. The last step is to add cardboard or scrapbooking paper strips. And I didn't really want to add cardboard. It just seemed to just too time consuming to go and do that. I didn't really have, I now had a scene and not like a randomness, you know, so um, I would have had to cut it into some type of shape and put it on the ships or something like that. So I decided to just take the scrapbooking paper option. And this is a piece of scrapbooking paper from a paper pad and it was teal and had those um, kind of scallopy shapes like an ocean. So I decided to use that and I just basically cut them into wave shapes and uh, glued them down in my ocean just to add a little bit of interest down there. Um, mostly because I had to do the step, not because I necessarily needed it at this point, but it adds more dimension and, and uh, you know, shapes. Makes it look like it might be kind of a rough sea. So I've accomplished all the eight steps. I've used a color from the color palette. I've used a word. Actually, I've used two colors, teal and gray. I've used the word accomplish. But the page is boring. Boring. It lacks color. So I decided to get out my pan pastels. Um, I thought I could add some quick color to my whole composition using these. So I start out with just like kind of a, a warm orangey yellowy color. Um, add that to the moon and then put some of it through the page giving kind of the the moon is highlighting you know glinting off the water and highlighting the tops of the sails and the tops of the boat and then I hadn't used lavender yet the colors were gray teal and lavender and I wanted to use some lavender I mean purple is my favorite so um, I wanted to get some of that in there so I did my shadows at the bottom of the sails and underneath things using the lavender which purples and lavenders are really kind of good colors for doing shadows um, in nature because they often are kind of that color. Then I got out the tealy turquoisey colors and kind of filled in my ocean a little bit um, pumping up the teal a little bit for balance. You can still see that the paper has writing. You can still see the pattern. You know, there's there's a lot going on there, like mixed media, but it's just filling in a little bit. And of course, then I had to add that color th throughout the page a little bit, here and there, um, to, to give balance. And then I used the gray um, pastel like on the outer section between the edge of the page and the rope to just kind of fill in and, and darken the edge of the page to give it a real border. So if you've enjoyed this this little page give it a thumbs up leave me a comment so I know that you're here. Um, turn on your notification bell if you've been missing some of my videos. It's because uh, YouTube has changed the way they do videos now. So their algorithm has changed. And uh, share if you want to. Pin it on Pinterest. Share on Facebook. Those type of things. All that stuff really helps me out. And my, my channel is uh, the amount of views has really dropped. So, you know, that stuff helps me. And I'm always appreciative if you do that. And if you want to play along with this challenge, be sure to go over to Mike Deacon's Facebook group, Mission Inspiration, and ask to join. So the final thing that I did um, after putting a workative fi workable fixative on here is to use my white Posca pin and just add some highlights, um, just to pop it up a little bit. And 
you know, on top of this, on top of that, scribbly, nothing super fancy. And then I use the same pen, just kind of add some splatters as well, because I like splatters. And I'm done. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.